forward, you know, they just did How High too. Yeah. Um, was there a reason why you didn't join that cast or were you not a part of that project? To kind of touch on a, a highlight in your career, you know, How High, yeah. 2001. Yeah. And from the research, that was like your first credit, your first film credit? Yeah, that was one of my first credit. I can't really remember what I did How High though. When it aired, the first week it aired, I was doing my first week in prison. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. Yeah, because I was, I only started, I only started doing sell, doing comedy mm -hmm. to kind of sell dope. Okay. Because I wanted to get out of town connections. So I know wow. I started doing comedy. You know what I mean? Because I ran in, I was really running from the police when I started anyway. Right. I, I was on Sunset Jack and White Boys. Because every time I get out of county jail, I go to Sunset and knock a nigga down for a Rolex. You know what I mean? I didn't have, I didn't need a gun. I like, just give me a Rolex, bro. Right. You know what I mean? Take the Rolex. And I see better not say nothing. And he, he's the, I said, oh shit, I'm in the way. When I ran into the comedy store, whoop, jumped on stage, said, everybody act like I'm a comedian. Y'all just laugh. Police finna come in here. They looked at me like, what the fuck? I said, y'all just laugh. Then the police came and looked around and everybody just started, oh, they started laughing. Then I, they ran out, police wow. ran out. And then everybody started clapping like, yeah. But God is so dope that the whole time I was pretending to be what I wasn't, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I, pre I was pretending to be what I really was as a right. comedian, you know what I mean? Wait, Perpetrating so, to be right. what I was not. So I'm just like processing, yeah. that was your first time on stage, on on a stand-up stage? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you were trying to avoid somebody. I was running from the police. Running from the police. And you run up on stage. That's like a movie. <laughs> yeah. I guess you can look at it like that. In the movie, a nigga would have got caught, though. I know. Why do you think the crowd protected you? Or did they, did they because still they, know? Because they thought I was, they, because I was so aggressive, they were scared. Then when the police walked in there, they were like, oh, this is a joke. And they was relieved. You know what I mean? So I was like, God, motherfuckers, what? And they was, oh, they just went crazy. You know what I mean? And it was, it was my first standing ovation. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Dang, I'm just processing that, like yeah. that whole thing of like, yeah. so I mentioned how high you did it in 2001. Where was your career at that point? Were you still kind of on a circuit? What was going on with your life? Well, see, probably my, me as a comedian, I never been broke. I've always been a street dude, so I'm always have bread. I have matches money at an early age. I've been on my own since 16. And it's hard for people to try to bless you when you look like you got something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, but now I'm more broker. Like I'm broke, I'm more broke now trying to do right because I won't take the, no, I got homies trying to give me 150, 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. I won't take that, you know what I mean? I won't take 15 kilos, you know what I'm saying? I won't, I won't take that because my gift that God gave me is greater than any hustle I could create. So I hustle my gift. So if it's for me to stay out here and just grind it out, Mm -hmm. I'll do that because I already did that on the side. And at the end of the day, when I chase that big paper, that's mm -hmm. already a broke way of thinking. Mm -hmm. So the broke ain't in this, the broke is in this. So once I got rich here, my money went down here, but I'm already rich here. So right. that's gonna catch up to this. Right. This could never catch down to that, you know what I mean? And so you get the call for how high though? Yeah. Was it a call? Was it a, a email? Mike Epps came and scooped me up. I was in the hood shooting dice. Mike Epps pulled up. I was in the middle. You know, he pulled up. Man, come on, man. I got a, I got a movie for you, man. Come on. And I looked at him like, I got so mad because he looking at me. I'm like, because you don't say nothing to no nigga in the middle of hitting a 10 to 4. You know what I mean? And I got to concentrate on this foe. Got money all around. This nigga talking to Hollywood shit. I want to hear that. And then Mike, a hood nigga, so he said, see me in the middle of 10 to 4? He said, my bad. And he bet it with me. And I hit that 4, and we've been making money together ever since. All right. Yeah. The whole narrative was you were the assistant pimp, or was it the assistant assistant pimp? I mean, yeah, that was funny. Did you, like, was that like off the top, or were you freestyling? Yeah, me and Mike, we seen the movie between 
between us and our comedy high fans. We wouldn't really impress with our roles at the time because mm -hmm. the funniest shit we did, they cut out. They cut out so much hella funny shit that the shit we did, it was all right. You know what I mean? Like we talking about whole scenes or just the Man, stuff y'all saying? We did. We did. Because what happened is when they tested the movie the first time at mm -hmm. the colleges, our characters tested high. So they called us back in and reshot the end of the movie to give us more scenes. Okay. Right? But because our because we had so many funny scenes that they couldn't put all of it in. And what they left in, me and Mike were really that impressed with. The editing, yeah. Yeah, like all the stuff we left in, even though it's legendary, it wasn't the best stuff, you yeah. know what I mean? It wasn't nowhere near the best stuff. We had scenes that we had took over the whole movie. I think that's what it's. That's what it seems like. Yeah. They had to tone it down because yeah, we had to tone. Yeah, they, Method Man and Red Man were the stars. Yeah, yeah. We, you know what I mean. So, you know. and so fast forward, you know, they just did How High Two. Yeah. Um, was there a reason why you didn't join that cast, or were you not a part of that project? I would have liked to be a part of it because I like DC Young Fly, mm -hmm. and I was shocked that they cheated the budget. You know, and um, but I don't in this business, you gotta really believe this. This might kind of sound kind of corny, mm -hmm. but only thing can make you bitter in this business mm -hmm. if you start believing something belongs to you. And if you really believe in your heart that God would never get nothing to nobody else that belonged to you, you'd never get mad for what nobody else received. Mm -hmm. You know, so when I didn't get the part, I never got mad because I knew in my heart that wasn't for me. So I was so excited because I knew my little homie DC Youngfly was finna shine. You know what I mean? And it's a long road, you know, mm -hmm. and you never, you never lose your identity over a day, over a week. Yeah. This, is a, this is a big picture, homie. And people who lose their spirit and lose their identity, they just zero in on the little things. And just like that, they fucked up forever. Cause you can't pull back when you lose your life. When you zero in on the little, man, your pull back is blurry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Man, cause I was just like, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you have a a, a positive outlook on it. Yeah. Because in kind of looking at it, it's just like, dang, like the way it kind of rolled out. Even Method Man commented on it. Uh -huh. He didn't. Um, they didn't reach out to him or give him a call. But you know what I wrote though? He said he got a cold part of body. Guess what I wrote though? Okay. This the code, and you know, I'm a code writer. I wrote, guess what I wrote? The return of the assistant pimp. Okay. Bitches. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, right. I wrote that, and it's, it's close to being in production. Dang. You know, and the reason they put it out of production, and it came back with a bigger budget. So it's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. I was thinking that because when you talked about how uh, you and Epps were just vibing, I was just like, well, why aren't y'all just. And me and Mike is like, we like real brothers, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, we argue, we fight. Okay. You know what I mean? But I love his kids and his family. He love my kids and my family. We talk all the time, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And really he was my mentor in teaching me about how this business works. Without Mike Epps, I wouldn't even be relevant right now. He showed me business. And he didn't give me the game, but he did better than give me the game. He taught it to me, and he showed me how to get it. And he helped me transition from hood to this industry without losing my identity. All right. You know what I mean? Because it so works for Mike you. I look at Mike in the big picture. Yeah. Like, I appreciate him just on the level that that's like my brother, man. Like, I love that dude. Where do you think things would have been if Mike never came into the picture? Man, I don't know, man. I think, you know... I think wherever you're going to end up, mm -hmm. it's already written. How you get there is, is, is questionable. But your destination, you know, because we all on a path, you know, but some of us be on the same path, but we take different routes and everybody how they crossroads. You know what I mean? But I think ultimately you're going to end up exactly where you're supposed to be.